In 2017, we have continued to witness undeniable examples of climate-related security risks, recurring drought in the Horn of Africa, the Lake Chad region, and in Yemen is contributing to insecurity and conflict. And the conflicts and the droughts amplify each other and have resulted uh, in famines at a scale not seen in many years. Rising sea levels uh, are threatening the very existence of people and countries, not least the Pacific Island uh, states. Dear friends, mitigating climate change and its negative security consequences is a key priority for the Swedish government, including during our term in the Security Council. Improved governance and increased attention to climate-related security risks is urgently needed, and there is no doubt that the United Nations should take a leading role in this regard, and we have been very clear on this. However, there is currently an institutional gap in the UN system when it comes to addressing the risks of instability, insecurity, and conflict arising from the interaction of climate change and social, economic, and political factors. This must change. For the UN to be truly fit for purpose, with conflict prevention at the core of its efforts, the UN needs to have the capacity to manage climate-related security risks. With one year left at the table of the Security Council, Sweden will continue to advocate for the urgency of this agenda and for the need to strengthen the UN's capacity in this regard. Sweden is, in fact, the largest contributor per capita to the Green Climate Fund, also to the Adaptation Fund, to the Green Environmental, um, uh, Global Environmental Facility, and other such funds. And we're also integrating uh, climate change adaptation and mitigation into uh, more and more of, of our bilateral development cooperation strategies with, with different countries. Their statements have full scientific support. This is the state of the art of science. Science today is forcing humanity for the first time ever in our existence on this little planet to pose the following question. We are actually in the power of destabilizing the whole Earth system. How can we stay within a safe operating space to allow ourselves to stand a good chance of delivering the World 2.0, the Sustainable Development Goals, a prosperous future for humanity? And if we do not stay within that safe operating space, if we do allow ourselves to continue destabilizing, I can tell you that if there's anything that science is um, you know, really surprised by, is the speed by which already one degree Celsius warming on planet Earth is impacting on social uh, societies, dynamics across the world. Climate and sustainability issues are obviously natural issues. They're about changes happening in nature. They are social issues. They're about changes happening in society. They are governance issues because they are social issues, because it's a question of how to manage and organize responses. And they're also human issues. We need fresh thinking. We need innovation. But because familiarity is so important, the change needs to be as light and as much in the grain of what we're doing as possible. So creating a small institutional home in the UN that takes knowledge which already exists in the field and builds on it, packages it, and presents it in a way that diplomats and decision makers can absorb and act upon, that seems to be a light, manageable change that could have a very big impact.